straight into the action. There's already a lock system there. That's something to do with there is a Haywood link which no longer exists. Yeah, so it's no longer in existence. <clears throat> the full stretch of the canal links to Haywood. And that's definitely coming, that's from the Irk higher up. And we've got to try and find one of its header reservoirs. But straight away, honestly, this canal system is fantastic. You're just straight into the action. Literally just pan around to the other side. I'm not messing. That's just a work of art, isn't it? You remember the weir? The weir up in Furs. Where I said it's a V-shape. That is why it's called a key lock. It doesn't lock with a key. Oh, it's not like a key on a cog. It's that very simple solution that if you don't close them properly, the weight of the water pushes them tighter together. So they won't float and there's, it's full of water in there because they push together against the wall. They won't move. Once the water's taken away, they're light enough to move with just this tiny handle. Brilliant. In it. Brilliant. Not going to do it. Not going to show teenagers how to do it. We'll leave that for when you're doing a proper lesson. But you probably couldn't shift it without knowing how to. It's very simple though. Oh, go on. It's part of history, isn't it? I've always wanted to do this. So you sit on it. Like so. And you put your bum down and you push backwards with your feet into these little grooves behind me. Yeah, there's little grooves behind me on the floor. Look at these bridges though. So this is from the 1800s. It's, this is 1790. But like the Berry Bolton Canal, it was a good, you know, it was really, really, at its height, like 1920s, it was still giving it some 1890s. You know, along with the railways, got a good, you know, it, had a, it was always at full capacity. Incidentally, all the lock gates along this canal are the same capacity. They, they hold exactly the same amounts of water in each lock, so there's absolutely no waste. Apart from what human beings throw in plastic bottles and such, I won't name a brand because they're all as guilty as one another. And I would literally give my life to have my garden come out onto a canal, especially this canal. This is Aces Canal. He was playing it as a kid, but I had no idea anything to do with its history. So further along, I came up the hill from Stanimore Coal Mine. I walked up the hill. So further up the hill, this will be channeled away from the Irk, do you understand? And the Irk's now flowing down somewhere, a bit like how the Irwell enters. So it's a guide, basically, leading from a higher point of the Irk. So we've got this direction here goes towards Chatterton. As I say, Middleton is mainly moorland. I've just gone through there, and I am right, but I don't want to go too deep into that and how I know. It's surprisingly. And there's, um, Langley has a massive housing estate, so they basically acquired the moorland quite cheap for a large housing complex. Or, estate. Uh, they, they pop up around the like, 1950s but they're built from the Second World War. The Second World War, we see it as a victory. No one really wins in a, a war like that. It's horrible isn't it on both sides. It's a long long time afterwards as well. Anyway, yeah so they, straight after the war, I don't know if Germany is the same, but they rebuild it um, basically with a lot of investment money because everybody's broke. I was going to say skint, but that's a word we use around here. So I'm not going to ramble on, but it is 75 years from the Second World War. That was 
just get, getting under fire first Christmas of the Second World War would have been this year, 75 years ago this Christmas, 2019. And the First World War would have been like a year it had been finished or that, that war wouldn't never finish really, would it? Because it took such a devastating toll on the young people. The Lancashire Fusiliers, based at Lancashire Barracks in on Bolton Road, is actually it's got its own train station on the Colne to Liverpool line to help the troops be spread out quicker. I think it was like 119 guys from there were sent on the first day of the First World War, and like two, I think it was two returned. But because they were so brave, all the young lads in the area signed up the day after, you know, and saying, well, we're going to help, you know, and everyone knows how many people died. Um, one of the main killers was a mustard gas attack that the Germans actually admit did go wrong. <clears throat> they actually did not mean to cause such devastation, although it was a war. So it's basically a really strong chemical weapon, mustard gas, but it was too effective. You needed like a 10% mix and they had a 100% mix and the wind changed and blew it all straight into the British, English, whatever, Scottish, Welsh, everybody were there, weren't they? Uh, they all have a branch of fusiliers, each country within the, what, what should we say, Great Britain? Or should we say the British Isles now? Yeah, I think we dropped the Great. There's nothing wrong with the British Isles. Britannia. Right, so there you go. We all died together, so there's no arguing. And um, women did everything else. Women built, made all the bullets. All the, uh, you know, they ran the place here. They did their share, you know what I mean? It's like, that's always been a big issue. But think about it, every bullet had to fire, it couldn't explode in the gun. They were working, they were doing the engineering that they say that men could only do. Even though it was for four years, no one ever said like, oh yeah, look, they can do it. <laughs> Just the same, and they can. Uh, the coal mining was full families said this before, so they didn't get split up. And women and men and young children were down in the coal mines. Um, I think it's something like, you know, like 900 feet down underground, 900 meters, and I don't know, it's, it's like miles underground in some cases. And then a, a tunnel a mile long underground into nowhere in pitch black, all with a candle. And then mum and dad would be down there and dad would probably do digging with mum and sorting and the kids would do the running up and down pushing coal carts about, or attaching them to ponies or whatever. Full families just had, you know, their own little sub network. So, got a goosey goosey gander. Goose, goose are friendly, I've found. They're the friendlier birds, but they don't like it if you sort of just waltz onto the territory. So we're going to see how this goes now. You might expect some food. I'm in a film, yeah, so don't worry. You're going to earn any food you might get. Hello. I know you're a mallard, not a duck. Hello, this is a Mr. Mallard. Now, I'm not sure why they're brown, I'm sure Bill Oddie does. No, I am a bird fan, I'm a nature fan. Hello. Yeah, I once was an ugly duckling. Oh, we're kidding, trying to tease. That's, of course, the story of the ugly duckling that grew up to be this one. But he's actually a, he's either a goose or some form of foreign duck. So that's the electric train. As I said, we're moving into modern technology. Up in the Berry in Lancashire area, I've stuck with 1800 and the 1850s. So we're gonna whip right up to like 1880 to the 1900s and get the trains in full swing. This canal is by, you can't get another barge on it. It's the busiest thing in Manchester. Well, there's a ring of these. They all attach around the Castlefield Basin into the Manchester Ship Canal. But they carry on because they invent the trains and they go just whack everywhere. They just put trains wherever you can fit a train, there's a train, basically. But they don't shut these down either because they're handy as well. It's just two systems, isn't it? One fails, you use the other one. So you, they, it's like some things will shut down, like B roads when they built the motorways and put modern concreted roads in and tarmac. The B roads, farm roads, they're just lanes now, aren't they? Engineer James Brindley has a wheel chamber fitted into his coal mine. So that's the first evidence of a machine being used along with the industries because the canals don't use machinery. It's not classed as machinery, the water channel floats the boats up and down and horses pull them along. So 
by the by the 1900s, they're all using diesel and things like that. The horses aren't used anymore. But in, in the mine, water is your enemy. It's not like your energy. So the water wheel fitted there is to power a lift to pump the water from the mine. This is the first ever evidence of a necessity to build an engine that can't be powered by water because you can't just fill the mine up with water to power a wheel. So this is where they start. It's steam, but actually there's gas engines and surprisingly diesel engines earlier than you'd think. And the first ever steam powered engine was actually fitted in a car. A man basically made a tin barrel or a boiler, put four wheels on it and everyone just thought he was ludicrous, laughed at him. And apparently there's reports of that in as early as 1770. <laughs> And everyone said, what are you doing? He basically put his kettle on, on a go-kart and started driving away with it. So, yeah, we're at the start of engines. Engines are fully in swing now, but this canal is only the same age as the Berry one. It's just that the Berry one's situated at the year 1800. I intend to do 1750 as well soon. Uh, 1900s, I will cover First and Second World War. So we're hitting 1900, it's 1880. Um, very prosperous times. We see ourselves as quite, you know, modern. A bit stuck up, the British now. We do, we have the old stiff upper lip and we see ourselves as part of the British Empire now. Um, there's also powerful rich people controlling the government, so we've got big investment. That, that'll that come, because I said that before about the war I mentioned earlier as I'm walking along. Okay, Manchester, UK, that's enough. Budgies down the mine and they're still using picks. So the engine comes in to pump the water out and then they started using it for the drilling equipment. And within 50 years we've got full steam trains, the lot. People are putting gas engines on bicycles, all sorts. <laughs> okay, peace out. sound again. So we've got a bit of a surprise piece coming up. Just nothing too spectacular. I'm not gonna say anything. But these uh, this is um, the ten H ten H D section. So I've just been talking to the fishermen. <laughs> Actually stops and talks them. Uh, it reminded me of my cousin and me when we were years ago. Stood there and he says, I've only caught one all day. So I actually saw some fish further up and they're all followed. I've come back up the canal 10 minutes later. They're all here fishing. They went, oh yeah, you can see it. It's more activity. I said, well, it's flooded further up. Because I heard it off that engineer. So I'm fishing men's friends for life now as well. As I say, I blend in, being a Mancunian and all that, you see, spiritual home. Because I was brought up as a kid around there, I knew how to approach the fishermen and they talked to them. So things haven't changed that much, you know. He's not going back to Africa yet. Well, I'll fly away in a bit. Love that sound. Okay, not a minute. So there's a few sections there. So we've got plenty of talking done. Um, I missed one section because there's literally hundreds of people, but we've got some really good, you know, I'm happy. And as I say, we've got a few little things to tie up. So I'm just going to go on and on. It should all fit in. Like I say, we'll have a, a bit of a surprise, a bit of footage, just to end this little bit. So, get some of the tranquility of the lake. You know, I say like because it's very similar to a lake. So the earth is high because that is touching onto the Pennine Moors. That's why it used to flood Manchester quite a lot. See how the infrastructure works, so, so it's very important. Okay, okay. That's not, that's not your mate. He was actually 
quack in it, a duck in the air and going to own uh, swans and such. Tend to never be on their own, so probably not come home last night or something with his partner. So he's, he's quacking at the sky, but he'll probably come back. He'll come back, that's what they do. Probably just on some other lake. Just with their friends, you know. So, probably out for the day. Probably the guy's probably out, isn't it? Watching Swan Lake. So, like you say, there's lots going on here, but I've got enough. I've just seen a stream that flows underneath, but I'm concentrating on the canal. I'm not every single can culvert that I find amazing. I've just seen the biggest fish I've ever seen in my life. Let's see if we can go in it. Oh wow, I have as well. I didn't know they were that fast. Thank you. 